Now, I've spoken to producer Tom and we've thrown the rule book out of the window for tonight's show. And we're going straight to an exclusive interview with one of the most respected journalists in the field of warfare and defence. He is the defence editor of the Evening Standard, Robert Fox. Uh, Robert, welcome to GB News. Why did Vladimir Putin invade Ukraine? Because I think he has two obsessions. He's got a personal thing about Ukraine. He feels Ukraine should never have been allowed to leave the Russian sphere. I nearly said Soviet sphere, and that's the second one. He is on record, and he's repeated it, as saying the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the Soviet Empire, was the biggest geopolitical disaster of the 20th century. There's plenty of competition around there, Mark, as you must agree. Yeah. But this is the thinking of the man. He's not a profound thinker. Contrary to what you get in the posh papers, acres of years and years and years commentary, he's not a great strategist. He's a very shrewd tactician. And as our best diplomats who've dealt with him will explain to you and have no hesitation in explaining to you his tactical genius, if that's it, is that of Don Corleone. He's a gangster. The thing is, this man, he respects no rules. He's a rule breaker. He breaks the treaties one after the other. And he had some co-conspirators in this. Of course, the orange one was uh, the best of the lot and didn't seem to understand what he was being asked to do. Because what uh, Donald Trump was doing, wittingly or unwittingly, was fulfilling this rather strange and rather childish playground playbook of Vladimir Putin, which is to get the Americans out of Europe. And that's his scheme. He, it's not that he wants to break NATO. It's it, not that he wants to break Ukraine. He wants to turn them into meaningless husks. And he's been at it from the very beginning. If he takes Ukraine, does he go any further? That is a very big question, and I'll answer it in these terms. Taking Ukraine, as you put it, is not such an easy job. And they're already finding that the timetable is slipping. And the timetable, perhaps we'll discuss this more. If it slips by a day, as one analyst who is really looking at it, he wearing uniform was putting it to me today, then the whole program slips by weeks. The conquest, which it is, looks as if it's turning into, the conquest of Ukraine can't be done with what he's got. And I think that this is where the, um, I know you don't like foreign words on your programme, but the imbroglio, as my oh, Italian please, friends I, I would thought, say. I thought we'd left the European Union. You did, yeah. For sakes. But anyway. You're drinking red wine yeah, now. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Chianti. This, this, <laughs> you know, the stew, and it's very Italian, like, because it's very godfather, mm. this, it will eat him in the end. Because we're already hearing, there's always just been a suggestion that even some of the commanders are already calling this Putin's war. You, you know, you made it, you solve it. And it could be the destruction of Putin. But if Putin goes down, yeah, should we raising, be raising thumbs? The whole thing collapses. And there's a real fear that it could collapse. All this confidence trickstering, the thing that he got up to with the Petersburg mafia when he first came to power after the end of, of, of the Soviet Union through that route, then the whole thing would collapse in a dreadful, crazy anarchy, which will affect the world very badly. But it's not an excuse for keeping him in power. Is Putin of sound mind? Ah, I, I think you gave... Um, it deserved be in some ways. You gave Emmanuel Macron a bit of a bum rap, and I understand why. Incredibly vain. And he started out on this journey using this as a tool, aha, for la réélection, to get, to get, to get re-elected. I didn't realise half this interview would be in French. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, do, actually, do, you me, do you want me to throw some Dutch in? Well, as well? I, I think I want my money back. <laughs> yeah. But a, anyway... He, he has changed. I mean, he's a man of, of subtle mind, whether you like it or not, Macron. Macron was the first to alert fellow leaders, fellow diplomats, look, this guy is strange. He has changed even from when I first met him. Emmanuel Macron did actually say that and said, look, you know, the crazy stuff about having him tested with the Russian Soviet-style PCR, and he knew what the game was. They wanted his DNA and so on. But it, it, what Macron also spotted, which we've all been spotting, is this strange language. 
this rambling stuff, which well, the started... De the denazification yeah, of Ukraine? which started in July last year with the very long essay about the mystical roots of the great Russian people, which really began, um, culturally very important, with Kiev. Kiev is part of Russia, and so is the Ukraine, and everything else is a betrayal. But there is something very childish, too, about the mentality. Come in, Dr. Freud. Sorry, we are going very continental. With He's like the betrayed son, for mm. some reason. And one of our most senior diplomats put it to me, our, 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 our lady in, in, in Washington, who is Malto smart. She um, she's known and dealt with Putin a lot. Said that you know that he is very resentful, and he pays revenge, almost you know like the playground, like 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 West Side Story. You, 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 you know sharks and jets, and this is this is the way they they see it. And where he is unsound as a diplomat, as a politician, and not a great strategist, strategist. Sorry, everything is far too personal for him now. Hence, you get the bonkers language, the denazification. I don't know whether the insult was deliberate or not, but you probably know um, Zelensky has Jewish roots. Yeah. To say that to him. Yeah. It's like his childishness. I, I think the president and the prime minister of Ukraine are both Jewish. Yeah, th th there's quite a... I mean, places like Odessa are very mixed, very interesting, cosmopolitan, you know, that is, you get half the Mediterranean, still a considerable Jewish element. And this is a very, very nasty streak uh, in, in Putin. He's appealing to his old bully boy pals of the KGB. And I think that this is, uh, I think this is what's worrying. This is what's worrying the young people, the people who are on the streets and are prepared to speak out to cameras. And they know it's going to be clocked by the successors of the KGB, the FSB and the GRU, but they're, they're, they're prepared to speak up against it. That's why I think, and it's a conjecture, a guess, the longer this goes on, the more people are going to be really peed off with him at home. And he's only got, he's got under two years. He's got to go for re-election. I know it, it's a fake, but he will make a big thing of this because if he goes in 2024, then he has the possibility of being president till 2036. And I don't think, I think possibly even half his army command won't buy that. To 2036, that's longer than Nicola Sturgeon, so... Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's ever. I think well, like, do you think there's a job swap on it? Right? <laughs> that, that's we not must a bad idea. It. But that's the other thing. that yeah. What I'm worried about is, is mm. this. It says he fat git saying this, but um, people aren't being really excoriatingly funny about this mm. because the, the performance... It's black comedy, black, black comedy, but it's comic. Uh, I, I, I was taught by a brilliant man who actually made history really live on the medium that we are now, A.J.P. Taylor. Brilliant And, by, and, by, and by the way, um, Munich, it's all from the age. I mean, they should have acknowledged Alan because it's all, all from him. It was it a success or a failure. All came, all, all came from him. Alan always used to tell me his favourite thing about the great era essay of the great era of the dictators was Duck Soup by the Marx Brothers. Brilliant. And you've got to get in there and we've got to get in there. And he hates it, Putin. Yes, a remarkable satire on, yeah. on how these dictatorships the, 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 were. Oh, that was Mussolini, yeah. uh, uh, Hitler, and to an extent Stalin at that time. But absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. An iconic film and uh, mm. another example of, of where comedians have their role in wartime. Um, what about this campaign if it doesn't play out well for Putin, is there a ladder from him with which to climb down? So can he say to the Russian people and the world, I've made my point, I crossed the Rubicon, we invaded Ukraine, and now I will come to the negotiating table and we will do a deal? What world? He's got very few friends. Even China, China, who actually is the puppeteer, mm. China's going to be the big buyer of Russian gas. It's saying, you know, looking at Taiwan, when they go for it, they're a bit worried about it. Mm. India, likewise, big pal, big consumer. And erstwhile friends like Turkey are saying, hmm, this looks odd. It, it, the, guy, the guy's gone rogue. Mm -hmm. And so he has not got that international. Your question is absolutely on the money. He hasn't got the international jury of public opinion because they don't care. They, 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 they think he's a bit bonkers. And that is a huge problem for him. But going back to Emmanuel Macron and so on, before him, and they noticed how very, very few people he talks to.
Mm-hmm. There are only about four advisors and only one, the defence minister, Dubois, is the one that he really seems to trust because things, you know, Lavrov, Lavrov has got property all over the Western world as far as I can make up, but certainly interest in the UK and the US. And he doesn't like this. He wants to get out. So He's been in the job 12 years. And so it, it, it's going to be very, very interesting to see this game plays out. But I think I mentioned to you before coming on air, mm. film again, The Last Days of Stalin, in which yeah. Simon Russell Beale so brilliantly played the really nasty hard man of the latter and the, the most powerful era part of the Stalin raid, Joseph mm. Stalin, and did perform so beautifully the figure of a man just falling apart when suddenly Dame Fortune takes power away like that. And I think we're looking at a similar thing in court, as in royal court, of would-be Tsar Vladimir Putin. 